Okay guys, so we're over in the speaker R&D lab and we're here with Wayne Colley from our new product development department. And he's gonna kind of walk us through the basic process of what we go through to, to really kind of develop these speakers and some of the parameters that we need. So Wayne, kind of walk us through just the basics um, of what we're doing here and, and why we do it. Uh, what we're actually using is a, our first piece of Clipple test equipment and uh, we're testing for a um, bunch of the speaker parameters, a lot of the parameters are either done in a low power environment or a high power environment using Clipple. Okay. Now you mentioned Clipple. So Clipple is a software program or a software system that we're using to, to test all of these speakers. Um, you kind of tell us why it's important that we're using the Clipple versus some of the other stuff that's out there. Um, well, the Clipple's most unique characteristic is that we can do a large signal identification or a high power test and then look at the results on a screen. So we actually use or um, test it in the same way that the consumer is going to listen to it. All right, so we obviously we developed the parameters here, but why is it important that we, we create these parameters and do this testing at this stage of the development process? Um, it's really important, actually. The, we set up all the feel small parameters and all the um, distortion measurements. We create windows so that we go and pass those on to our quality control machines on the factory. When they test the speaker, they get a simple pass-fail from the window that we set up, or basically the tolerance. Okay. The other reason that's really important is when we do the life endurance test, we bring them back to see if any of those parameters are shifted or changed. Okay, so this is kind of setting us up for the testing during the production cycle. This also allows us to give us a, a blueprint or a benchmark with which we can test all of the production pieces against to see if, if there's any changes that we want to make, any adjustments to the materials, any adjustments to the design, plus also obviously during the production cycle of the final goods, then we're going through a, a whole quality control process. Absolutely. Okay, so, and you mentioned the boom room, so we talk about uh, obviously the development of the speaker, but what's the boom room and what, what kind of equipment do we use over there? Um, the boom room is kind of as the name implies, it's basically used to test all of our speakers. The subwoofer for instance will get a, a 24 hour straight maximum power test. That way we can ensure that um, the speaker is going to hold up and it'll uh, handle the rated power as well. Okay. So it's kind of separated off from the building. It's, it's very, very loud, uh, isolated from the building as well. We can run a, a large number of woofers at one time. Okay. The advantage of the clipple piece in there is it goes between the, the amplifier and the speaker. So we don't obviously want to spend the whole 24 hours in there watching the speaker. Sure. So what the clipple PM, PM8 will do is it'll monitor the speaker for us. So if we came in there and forever, for whatever reason, if a speaker was blown apart, we go back and look at like the distortion curve to figure out, hey, it was the spider that failed first and the surround. Um, kind of leaves us a, a breadcrumb trail as to the problems the speaker had. Okay, so it really gives us a lot of insight on, on not just that the speaker failed, but what caused the failure, or in a sense, what component may have failed first. So Absolutely. it really allows us to go back and, and in a sense do an autopsy. Absolutely. And, and figure out if, if it was within parameters when it failed or if we need to make a change or anything. Yeah, we can even look at the, the temperature of the speaker as well and, and uh, figure out a way to dissipate heat differently. Lots of different things, lots of information can come from the PM8. But yeah. Okay, so not only do we go through the process of you know creating the blueprint that our speakers tested, go through the whole validation process with the boom room, but these are also used obviously on the production line for quality control. They're tested over there during the production cycle, but, but we don't just stop there, right? Um, no, actually when the speakers are shipped over to us, we uh, use the QC machine that we have here in-house to validate them for a second time. Make sure everything still falls within that window um, from the factory. So basically we're, we're double checking all the inventory that we receive in uh, to make sure that the numbers that we're seeing coming off the production line actually match what we're seeing in house. Yes. Uh, and this of course ensures that the quality of the products that we send out to our customers and our dealers actually are meeting the standards that we've set ahead of time. Absolutely. It uh, really helps contribute to lowering any uh, uh, defective rate that we may have. Okay. So, it's, as you can see, this is a, a long process that we go through. You know, this isn't something where we just go to a supplier and say, build us a woofer. We're actually going through a long, multi-step process to ensure that every speaker and woofer that we manufacture with the Lightning Audio brand actually meets the standards that we want it to meet. So, that way, when you, the consumer, get the product, you know it's going to be of a high quality level. So thank you Wayne for talking with us You're today. Uh, thank you guys for watching and I'm sure we'll see you again in another video.